the rich socialites chilling in their family luxury resort was a sight to behold. Grayson Andrews, the heir of the giant Andrews Corporation, who was just back from his Europe tour, and his sister Veronica was the notorious I want it, I get it girl. Ahem, this orange is oversweet. But, miss, this is fresh orange with no added sugar. Whatever, add some salt or anything, immediately. And bring me a sandwich with the beluga caviar here, too. Yes, miss. <laughs> You've become some grumpy old lady recently, Ronnie. Right at that moment, their dad hurriedly walked in, looking urgent. Kids, I have something serious to tell you. Do you remember our resort in Vietnam that got backlash last month? Is this the case where people were blaming us for harming the environment? It's just some employee's reckless act, and we already cleared it out, right, Dad? That's right. But I've just got the report that the inspectors got involved, and the resort's suffering a great loss. I couldn't see it keep sliding like that. So, I've been thinking of sending you to Vietnam to take care of this. Dad, you can count on me! Vietnam, isn't it? That's where an idea came to Veronica. Dad, let me go with Grayson. I could be helpful! Her dad was considering it for a while, and then agreed. Oh, Vietnam, it's been a hot minute. Of course, I have my own reason to be here again. And this is my reason. It all started back four years ago, when Veronica's family gathered at Nam Family's resort on Lunar New Year, Ted Holiday. Wow, my friend, see what you're building. You're right, I bet everyone would love this. Honey, this resort is surely profitable with this design and location. If only we could own one like this. Meanwhile, 14-year-old Veronica was totally mesmerized by someone else. Right at the moment her eyes caught the sight of Nam, Veronica was sure she met the one. Oh my, is this what people call love at first sight? Look at you! The little kid now grew up into a pretty girl, huh? Here's your lucky money! Instead of lucky money, could you please give me your lucky son? Everyone burst into laughter at her cheekiness, including Nam. I heard Nam is an excellent student at school. We can't waste talent, right? So, I think I'll offer him a scholarship in America. What do you say? A scholarship in the USA? Surely it's a good opportunity for me. He turned to see his parents' reaction, and they all nodded encouragingly. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. I'd do my best to pay back your kindness. But he definitely wasn't the one who enjoyed this the most, as our Veronica's heart was singing with joy, too. So that summer, Nam flew to America with all of the eagerness and excitement about the land of dream. He'd be staying with Mr. Andrew's family for the time being, and enrolled in the same school as Veronica and Grayson. And within the first week at the new school, he already established himself as a genius. It didn't take long for him to top in every single subject, and teachers were satisfied as he was also active in school's activities. Son, I'm so proud of you! Cozy as it seemed, the laughter in a warm family dinner didn't shine on the host's son, Grayson. I'd never heard the proud word from dad before. Being the heir is not easy, but I tried my best. Why was he always the one outstanding? After the dinner, when others left, Mrs. Andrews approached Nam. Don't think my husband gave you some compliments that you believe you're above anyone. Remember, you're just a parasite on my husband's kindness. So Mrs. Andrews didn't like me here. I'd better be careful. From a corner, Veronica was hearing what her mom said to Nam. Mom's always been hard like that. It's all right, Nam. Be strong. You have me here. And she made sure she'd be anywhere Nam was, and no girls could come near him. Nam, be my boyfriend, will you? Ronnie, don't make a scene here. Aw, did he just call me Ronnie? Everyone, attention! Nam is mine. Don't you dare bother my man. To seal up even more, she stuck a bunch of stickers on his clothes and bag. Huh, <laughs> nice tattoo, bro. It's nonsense. You like it? Then here. Then when Grayson had ran far, he looked down on his hand holding a sticker. Stupid girl. She couldn't design a better one? You think it's the end of how to get Nan's heart plan? Then you underestimate this girl. Ah, Nam, I got sunstroke. I'm too weak to walk myself. Take me home. Jeez. Seemed like she'd never run out of tactics, huh? Wow, tending to your bay this much. <laughs> Nam simp lord. The buzzing from the others did bother him, but he didn't want to make a mess as he's indebted to Veronica's family's kindness. And deep down, he found her annoyance kind of... cute? Aw, so sweet, man. Maybe he likes me too. And then Grayson ran towards them and cheerfully gave them the good news. Hey, Dad just won a big contract, and we will dine in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant tonight, guys. Yay! Are you sure you're tired? Um, ouch! Oh, my head hurts so bad! Nom, I think I'm gonna faint. Carry me, too! You wish? I'm gonna be up here forever! 
Then three of them walked side by side, happily chatting, and the schoolyard seemed to be lit up by their cheerful laughter. Everything went smooth like that. Then one day, Veronica woke up to see Nam was packing all his stuff. What are you doing? I'm going back to Vietnam. Why? Has anything happened? Please don't go. Get off me. Then he coldly walked straight out of her house with no more words. Veronica crouched in sadness. Worse still, no matter how hard she tried to contact him, still no replies from Nam. The only news she could update was his family's resort was plunged into crisis. And with a good will, Veronica's dad offered to buy the resort with an enormous sum to help them restart their business anew. And for the past four years, her heart still wanted no one but Nam, and she'd been waiting desperately for this reunion. Yo, long time, right bro? Hello, stranger. It actually feels good to see them too. If only that hadn't happened, the three of us might still be a perfect trio now. Nam couldn't forget the day when the hurtful truth was revealed. It's, it's you who schemed against our resort? But why? Huh, you should ask why your father had that impeccable resort that makes me want it to be mine. <laughs> Thanks anyway. You, I'm gonna tell Mr. Andrews. Suit yourself. But remember, two families are working together on a project. Let's see. If we withdraw, who knows? Your family will go bankrupt. Do you really want that? Huh? Nam felt rage boiling up his body, but so did the powerless feeling. Right at that moment, he saw Veronica went home and immediately clanged to her mom. Mom, there's a new spa downtown. Does it speak mother-daughter time to you? Of course, hun. Anything you want. They're all the same. Spoiled rich socialites who think they're above everyone. And right in that minute, he realized that he couldn't be here any longer. Xin Chao, Nam, how you doing? Do you miss me? But Nam just coldly turned to the other direction. <laughs> seems like someone just got ignored. And seems like someone wants a death note. That's fine, he's just being shy. I'd be staying in Vietnam for a while and definitely make him my boyfriend. Nam, you can't run away from me this time. <laughs> but Nam was such a workaholic, and with Veronica's presence, he's stuck in the office even later. At this rate, how am I supposed to seduce him? There is the only way. After that incident, Nam's family managed to build a small hotel, but attracted a great influx of tourists. That afternoon, Veronica came there, then barged into the office room. Oh, hi. Uh, I mean, hello. Hi. Dad told me to go here and learn some business, but Grayson doesn't give me anything. Please let me help you here. What do you want now? Nam just wanted some peace away from Veronica, but things didn't go that way easily. Come on, son. Do you remember when our family had a hard time? Veronica's family was willing to help us. Pfft. <laughs> help our butt, Dad. If only you knew. Okay, but don't make a mess here. The day after, Veronica had the first working day at Nam's family's hotel. Mangosteen? We don't have this in America. Hey, you! Bring me more! Hey, guys. Can you bring the sunshade here? I'm not wanting to be a burnt squid. Didn't you tell me you wanted to learn? Get off your butt! Then Nam gave her loads of errands that she hardly had time to breathe. Jeez, I don't need to lift a finger at home. And now I'm folding blankets? The world is getting crazy! Then she shook off the bedsheet, but somehow the towel covered her head like the one in a ghost story film. Ooh, let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm sexy and I know it. Little did she know, there was someone who couldn't hide his smile watching her fooling herself. She hasn't changed much, <laughs> <clears throat> hey, what you doing? Do it properly. Later, Veronica was dragging her aching body back to her family's resort after her first working day. Oh, I can't feel my hand anymore, and my feet hurt running around. Stop whining, Ronnie. It's nothing to what I've done today. Planning the strategies, promoting the services, blah, blah, blah. Grayson turned around to see his sister already sleeping like a log. He gently put the blanket on her when he received a phone call from Mum. Hi, Mum. I'm doing just fine. No need to worry. Hey, I heard Nam's family's hotel is doing good, right? But right at the time our resort suffered? Coincidence can't explain this properly. Grayson, I'm sure he planned to get this revenge for the past thing. I don't think he's that much. <laughs> anyway, Mom, you still hate him after those years? I hate your dad always comparing you with him. This low class will never be on the same level with my son, right? What Mum said didn't stay still in Grayson. It's true that Dad always regard him more than me. Even when he's gone back to Vietnam, Dad still talked about Nam being this, Nam being that. Next morning, Veronica got up and freaked out that she'd overslept for more than two hours. When coming to the hotel, she received a glaring look from Nam and a long list of errands that seemed not to end. Gosh, I have to do this for how long? Finish it, and we're going out for lunch. 
Hearing that, Veronica diligently cleaned every corner of the hotel, making sure no single speck of dust left. Yay! Let's go for lunch! Huh? But why you're here as well? Happy being the third wheel? Then they went to a local store selling chicken rice, which was definitely out of Veronica's expectation. What the heck? Eating on the street? Nom, I don't like this place. I'm sweating like a dog already. Go to some restaurant and treat me with beefsteak. If you don't like it, then don't eat. No worries. I'm gonna take care of her plate. Come on. Okay, but you have to feed me. Uh... Feeling others' eyes on him, Nom had no other choice but to act along. At the first spoon, Ronnie didn't expect the taste explosion of the soft and tender chicken, as well as the gravy and rice. She immediately dug in the plate and finished in seconds. Slow down! No one takes your food! Then he gently wiped out the rice on her cheek, making her heart skip a beat. Later, Veronica and Nam took a stroll around Han River. You ask about Grayson? Veronica successfully cut the tail and made him stay still in a coffee shop. Ow! Oh, Vietnam summer is definitely like a giant oven! Aha! Uh -huh. How about the classic move? Then, Veronica wobbled like a jellyfish, aiming to fall into Nam's arms. But he suddenly walked away, leaving her landing face right on the ground. She scrambled up to see he was already chewing the fat with some random girl over there. Veronica immediately stormed in like a crazy bull towards the girl. Hey, who are you? I'm Nam's girlfriend. You better stay away from him or else. <laughs> sorry. See you next time. Then Nam hastily dragged her away. What are you doing? She's not the one you could mess around. She's my biggest partner. Is that so? I... I'm sorry. You, go back to work. Right now. Then Nam caught up with Grayson at a coffee shop by the river. My sister is a little annoying, right? As her brother, I do apologize to you. She's fine for the most part, but sometimes... Yeah, you know. I don't know what to do with her. There's always an answer for everything, bro. The next day, Veronica came to Nam and saw him about to go somewhere. And as usual, she insisted going along with him. Enough! Stop goofing around! But I like you! You know that! Right at that moment, a girl walked over to them. Babe! Immediately, Nam turned around and pulled her in his arms. Here you are! Then he kissed her on the lips, and Ronnie was frozen in her spot. I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer, when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief. But suddenly, a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? He gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant. Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. 
At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough, you will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However, all the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? S sorry I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. B but you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted... Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch. I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe, something's come up. Can't make it, X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. 
Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. I, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. How about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope, my lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh wow, that's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate. Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you. I had enough. So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help, and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was in a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect a pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. 
Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. What? Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel, and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <laughs> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be. Hey, I'm Millie. I'm 14, and I have the biggest crush on my older brother's best friend, Jason. When my brother said Jason and his other friend were staying over that weekend, I was super excited. Things got even better when my parents planned a last-minute trip away, and our cool Aunt Cheryl came to stay with us. We both knew that she'd be too busy binge-watching her fave soap opera to care about what we did. That's why she's the coolest aunt. So I decided to also throw a slumber party, and I invited my two best girlfriends, Jane and Rosie, over. My plan was that we could order pizza and ask my brother and his friends to join so I'd have a chance to hang out with Jason. I knew they'd say yes. I mean, when did boys ever turn down pizza? After we all ate loads of pizza, we watched scary movies together and played games. It was really fun. So fun, in fact, that even my usually moody brother couldn't stop laughing. I wore my cutest pajamas and was extra nice to Jason, making sure he always had a drink and stuff. We played two truths and one lie, and the boys lost. So we made them give up the mattresses in my brother's room for us to sleep on, as sharing my bed with two friends was kind of uncomfortable. The boys had to carry the mattress to my room and make the bed for us. It felt so good to be able to have one up on my brother and boss him around. Rosie and I got into my bed and Jane claimed the mattress, as she tossed and turned loads in her sleep. For fun, we ordered the boys around a little more. I made them check the room for spiders and to take the trash downstairs. Then, Jason turned off the light for us and said goodnight before they went back to their room. That was so sweet. We chatted for a bit. Then Jane said she felt left out, so she crawled into my bed. It was too cramped for me to sleep, but that didn't seem to stop the others from drifting off. I kept thinking about Jason and how I was sure he'd been looking at me as he turned the light off. I went downstairs to get myself a glass of water, and on the way back to my room, I heard noises coming from my brother's room. I listened outside of the door. They were playing truth or dare of some sort. I heard them teasing Jason about liking one of us and said that the next dare would be to sneak into the girl's room. Worried that they'd walk out and see me, I quickly ran back to my room. I didn't even have time to climb into my bed, so I threw myself onto the mattress and laid still. Then, a while later, I heard footsteps. It must be Jason. His shadow got closer to me and it felt like he was leaning down. And then, he kissed me! OMG! I tried my best to pretend like I was asleep. Then, I couldn't hold it in anymore! I kissed him back. He gently stroked my hair, then left. I couldn't believe it! He liked me too? And that was my first kiss ever! The next morning, I woke up early, did my hair, put on a pretty dress, and made pancakes for breakfast. I made one in a heart shape for Jason, which I set up on the table. But when everyone came downstairs, my brother took that heart-shaped pancake and gave it to Jane before I could do anything. 
Did he like my best friend? Ew, no way. After everyone left, I immediately told my brother he couldn't like my friend, but he told me that she liked him too. He said he knew I liked Jason, so we should join forces and help each other out. That kind of sounded like a sweet deal, so I agreed. My brother set up a movie date for Jason and me by saying it's just a normal weekend hangout. Then he bailed out last minute. The date was perfect. I accidentally touched Jason's hand when we both reached for the popcorn. I thought that this was it. It's time for me to talk to him frankly. So after the movie, we grabbed a drink and I said to him, I know you like me. Let's stop acting as if nothing happened. He looked confused and laughed. Then I went on more specifically. You know, that night you came into my room? But he kept looking really lost, saying that he didn't go into my room that night at all. Then his phone rang. It was Jane calling him. Her picture showed up on the screen. Why does he have her phone number? He picked up and told her he'd be over shortly. I immediately asked him about it. Then he stuttered, saying that, actually, he and Jane had just started dating. They first met at my slumber party and had exchanged social media accounts and have been talking to each other nonstop ever since. He also said that they were thinking about how best to tell me and my brother about this. And, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have met Jane. But what were you talking about before? Continue. Stunned, I quickly replied with, <laughs> gotcha. I was just kidding. It was a dumb dare. My brother dared me to prank you because I lost a game to him. I made my excuses and swiftly left after that. I felt completely mortified. When I arrived home, I threw a tantrum and told my brother everything, including the part about me overhearing them playing truth or dare and the kiss. He just sat there listening with his mouth wide open. And then things all came to light. They dared Jason to go into the girls' room and draw on our faces, but he refused, so he chose truth instead, and he answered a question saying that out of all the girls, he liked Jane the most. After that, my brother felt uneasy. He was confident that Jane had eyes on him, too, so he pretended to go to the bathroom, and then he came into my room, and before he could stop himself, he kissed Jane, and she kissed him back. But turns out, it was me! I was the girl who was lying on the mattress. He then screamed at me. Why did you suddenly switch beds? While I screamed back, you stole my first kiss? This is so disgusting and awkward. We quickly calmed down and stopped yelling at each other because it's even too embarrassing to fight about. We then swore to keep this a secret till the day we die. And now we have two heartbroken siblings who have accidentally kissed each other in this household. Not to mention, from now on, we will have to watch our crushes being all lovey-dovey with our friends, too. This is a nightmare. Ah, now what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh, I suppose I better get that. O-M-G, who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life! I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement, but then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mum and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case, welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W was this a gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious-looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aw, why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens, 
she found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh. She needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me, smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face, and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! <laughs> Take that, Anna! He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> Back home, I saw Jaden's mom, Cynthia, watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over, then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon. One whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous, especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but... Bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine. So quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him. He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually, not. Yet, I was pretty sure Jaden liked me, too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh! Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! Huh. Tonight was the night. So I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura, Megan, this is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring and asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry, because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both, while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but why her? And what about me and Jaden? 
After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew! Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. She tried on this one dress, and... Yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, Well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. As on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um, sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation, we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden! That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot. I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl. And I do like you. But just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me. Didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mom! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? 
Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore, and I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school... I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mum packing. Are you... moving away? <sighs> yeah. I moved here to settle down and start a new life with Randall. And this house is for Jaden's future. But the wedding's been cancelled, so... I quickly asked Jaden if we could talk outside. My mom's cried so much. Randall's her soulmate and she can't stay around her if she can't be with him anymore. The most annoying part is that she agrees with him that the kids must come first. So, I hope you're happy now? Oh my god, what have I done? His words were like a stab to my gut. Oh no, this was all my fault. I was so obsessed with Jaden that I didn't stop to think about what was best for everyone else. Without saying another word, I ran back home and burst into the kitchen where Dad was drearily staring into his iced coffee. Dad, you deserve to be happy with Cynthia. So, please go and tell her how you feel before she leaves for good. But it was too late. Cynthia and Jaden had gone. Just kidding! <laughs> nah, actually, Dad managed to catch Cynthia just in time, and he told her how much he loves her, and can't live without her. So, guess what? Yep, they got married, and now they're both happier than ever. I've learned the hard way that being selfish and inconsiderate of other people's feelings for my own gain just makes everyone miserable, including myself. So, now we're one big happy family. And I suppose having Jaden as a brother isn't actually so bad after all. My name's Mary. I'm 20 years old, and I grew up with a very strict and religious mother. Every Sunday during church, I would say the same prayer to God. Please, God, help my mother to change into a different person to make my life easier and more comfortable. I never actually expected God to answer my prayers, but then something completely unexpected happened. Living with my mother wasn't easy for Dad and me. She was very strict and always had her ridiculously high standards. As a result of this, she gave us both a long list of daily house chores and she could turn from a well-tempered woman into a monster at the slightest thing. Once, when I was dusting, I accidentally smashed one of her beloved cat ornaments and she locked me in my bedroom for a full day. Another time, Dad forgot to take the trash out, so she emptied it into his briefcase. Mom also liked to have us live by her rules. Dinner was at 7 p.m. prompt. Bedtime was at 9.30 p.m. with no room for adjustment, and under no circumstances was I allowed to ever go out with a boy. I mean, come on, I'm a 20-year-old girl! I started dating this guy called Ben in secret. He's such a kind, caring guy, but I knew Mom wouldn't see it that way. So when I went round to his, I had to pretend to her that I was meeting friends. It was difficult having to lie to Mom and it sucked that I couldn't stay over at his place. I was a grown woman, but mom made me feel like I was still a little girl. As much as dad and I loved mom, her strict rules and temper were getting to us. One time, I overheard mom yell at dad, you're a useless old fool and I don't know why I married you. I walked into the kitchen to find dad sighing deeply while staring blankly into space. Turns out, her outburst was all because he'd made toast with the bread mom was saving for sandwiches. I felt so bad for him, so the next time I was at church, I said my usual prayer to God. I never expected Mom to actually alter her ways, but then everything changed 180 degrees after the terrible accident. My mom had a serious car crash in which the airbag didn't pop out in time. She bumped her head hard and ended up in a coma. Seeing Mom lying there unconscious and helpless was horrible. I prayed to God for her to wake up, even if it meant putting up with her strict rules. 
I actually believed that she was in this state because of me and my evil prayers. But then, a miracle happened. After three whole agonizing months, my mother woke up. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers again. Only, my mother was looking at me like I was a complete stranger. Then she said to me, Sweetie, do you go to my school? As you look familiar. Huh? What was going on? Then, when she saw her reflection in the mirror, she screamed and said, How am I so old? This mirror's broken! The doctor ran some tests. Turns out, Mom lost all her memories that happened after she was 18. So, in my mother's mind, she's still an 18-year-old schoolgirl. Having a mother with the mindset of a teenage girl was, well, difficult. We had to decorate the spare room with a load of posters of bands from the 80s I've never heard of before. We had to teach her what a laptop was and show her how to use the cooker. Also, she never cleans anymore, and she even steals my clothes! My dad now works a lot, and I'm stuck playing mom to my mom! I once caught her trying to sneak out in my miniskirt and tie-dye t-shirt, and I folded my arms and scowled at her. You're not going out dressed like that! She got so mad with me and sulked off to her room. OMG! I just realized I was becoming my mother! But she did look ridiculous. She's a 45-year-old woman, not some teenaged girl. But after the initial shock of my mother acting like a completely different person, I began to warm to her. She was funny, super curious, and most importantly of all, she didn't care about rules. Although one time my cell rang, this startled her so much that she grabbed it and threw it in the sink. Yeah, I wasn't overly impressed, but I guess it was kind of funny. She just didn't understand this world anymore. The one thing I did enjoy was having pamper evenings with her. She put scrunchies in my hair and helped me put my mask on. Then we chatted for hours about school, mean girls, and cute boys. Yeah, so, okay, talking about boys with my mom was weird, but it felt like this wasn't my mom at all, but someone new entirely. Then she asked me if I had a boyfriend, and I nodded without hesitation. Now I can comfortably talk about him without being afraid of her judgment. I told her, Ben is so cute, polite, mature, and very talented. And he's so good with technology. Oh, he sounds swell, she smiled. Um, could you invite him over to show me how to use that face what's it thing on the computery thing? I replied, sure, ma- Um, I mean, sure, Wendy. This was great! Now, not only could I be open about having a boyfriend, but now instead of feeling afraid of mom, I was friends with her. Ben came over and helped mom out with the computer and things. I mean, she still seemed completely puzzled by it all, but he seemed so chilled around her, even when she picked up the laptop and began to shake it in an attempt to get it to turn on. Um, yeah, the on button helps. I left them to it and went to get orange juice. But then I walked back into the room to see her brushing her fingers through his hair. When she saw me, she quickly pulled her hand away, and I was left wondering if I imagined it. But then later on, when we were watching a movie, she made a big deal of sitting next to him. Did my mom have a crush on my boyfriend? No, surely not. But then, after Ben left, mom said, That Ben is so handsome. Unlike that old man that also lives here, he has terrible dress sense and smells like cod liver oil tablets. This shocked me. Poor dad. I guess it was a good thing he was working away so much as I don't think he could have dealt with mom being like this. Then, a few days later, mom invited Ben over for dinner to thank him for helping her. At that point, I thought that maybe I was just too skeptical. My mother may be childish and impulsive, but she would never be her daughter's rival. Right? While I was cooking in the kitchen, the two of them were laughing non-stop in the living room. They told each other endless stories, and it was annoying that my mother kept praising him and jumping up and down like a kid. I had to put on headphones and try to focus on cooking so I didn't have to hear those ridiculous sounds. But when I finished prepping dinner and took off my headphones, the house was strangely quiet. Where did they go? I walked out into the living room to the most horrifying sight. While Ben was trying to focus on the computer screen, my mother was sitting next to him on the sofa, her hands all over him. What the heck? Her hand was moving downwards and touching his thigh. Stop! I shouted. Startled, Ben stood up. That's when I noticed sweat drenched his shirt. He stuttered out, I, I didn't do anything. Your mother. And then he ran away. Needless to say, 
about my mum, she didn't look embarrassed at all. On the contrary, she turned to me and moaned out, Thanks a lot, Mary. You scared off my date. I went crazy, threw a mirror at her, and told her to have a long, hard look at herself. She screamed back at me that Ben loved her because of her soul, not her age or appearance. And you know what? My mum and Ben are now texting each other. I don't know what's more shocking, that my mum's trying to steal my guy, or that she actually figured out how to text. Ben showed me some of the messages and they're so bad, I actually thought I was going to vomit. One message said, Please, Ben, I want to meet up in secret and kiss you and things. Mary never needs to know. Ben explained to me that he didn't know what to do. He says he loves me and never wants to risk losing me, but he didn't want to be rude to my mom as he knew she wasn't herself. Poor Ben having to deal with all this. From now on, I'm keeping Ben and my mom apart. So I've gone from having a secret boyfriend to having a mom who wants to kiss my boyfriend. My life is crazy. Please, God, I don't recognize my disciplined, strict mother anymore. And as challenging as it was to be around her, I miss her. And I just want her back. Hey, Kat here. I don't want to alarm you or anything, but this is the final part of my story. I hope you'll enjoy it. And here's a reminder of what's happened in the last part. You remember, my dad told me surprising news that he wanted to get back with mom, and he needed my help, don't you? Of course, I jumped at the chance and immediately put my healing family relationships plan into action. I knew I had to somehow delay mom's wedding to Max so I pretended to break my leg. My plan was totally working, as not only did they postpone the wedding, but Max and Taylor moved out to give me time to heal. I was very satisfied, because everything was going as I planned, when suddenly, right on the day I had the bandage removed, I arrived home to hear the awful truth that shocked me to my core. My dad didn't want me to exist in the world, because I was a girl. As soul-destroying as it was, I continued to listen to Mom and Dad's conversation. I heard Mom say, I will never forgive you and never forget the moment you wanted me to get an abortion. Never! So don't think I will ever let you come back to this family. Dad replied, Mary, please, I beg you. I'd heard enough, so I ran into my room. It all made sense now. No wonder Dad supported my tomboy style because he desperately wanted a boy. As for my mom, she tried to make me dress up like a girl to get revenge on him. Feeling unwanted and unloved, I packed some clothes and quietly left the house. Normally, when I was upset, I would run to my dad's, but that option was out, obviously. So where could I go? Then I thought about Harry, so I called him to pick me up. And I just told him that I felt really bad right now and wanted to run away from home. Without knowing what the exact problem was, he showed up and drove us to the beach. He bought us loads of snacks, and we sat there in silence and watched the sun go down. Then Harry turned to me and said, Are you ready to talk about it now? I sighed, ate a handful of Cheetos, then told him everything. I still can't believe it. My dad, the person I love the most, didn't want me at all. Then my mom just used me to make him suffer. Talk about exhausting. It's best if I disappear from their lives. It's not like I'm wanted here anyway. Harry listened. He looked shocked, but he didn't interrupt me. Then he patted me on the back and pulled me in for a big hug. It was weird because we never usually showed each other that kind of affection, but it didn't feel strange at all. Instead, I felt safe next to him. At this vulnerable moment, he's the only person I still trusted. After a long silence, Harry turned to me and said, Um, who said you aren't wanted? I'm happy that you were born. I mean, meeting you is the best thing that ever happened to me. I've never met someone like you before. Kat, you're a brave and an amazing girl. My heart skipped a beat and I felt my face turn bright red. I never knew that Harry thought of me like that. Then he touched my hand and said, And there's something you should know. Um, I really, 
Oh my god, I didn't know why my heart was beating so fast. What's he gonna say? But then, his phone rang. It was my mum. She'd been looking for me for hours and was worried sick. When Harry told her I was with him and I was fine, she sounded so relieved. I'm not a blubber. I cried and couldn't stop. I let Harry tell her where we were. When mum arrived, she rushed over and hugged me. Why didn't you tell me you were at the beach? I was so worried. Honey, don't you ever do that to me again. I hugged her and cried so loud. I didn't really know why I cried. Maybe because it was the first time we've ever properly hugged, and I could feel her love towards me. After we finally stopped crying, and trust me, it took a while, I told her that I knew the reason why she divorced Dad. She wiped off tears on my face and said, Oh, sweetie, I kind of guessed you must have heard us fighting earlier. I'm so sorry about that. And now you know the reason why I was always so strict on you and wanted you to dress like a girl, to show your dad how amazing it is to have a daughter. But instead, you dress and behave like a boy, just like your father wanted. But mom, you have to understand that I dress and behave like this because it's who I am. It's not because of dad, not because of Harry, not because of anyone. If I change, it would mean that I don't live as my true self anymore. So, can you please let me be me, mom? My mom smiled at me and replied, Oh, of course, sweetie. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. It was so selfish of me. I was so focused on going against your father that I forgot about your feelings. Can you ever forgive me? Of course, mom. And then we cried again. Since then, things with my mom have improved a lot, but there was still some unfinished business I had to handle. Firstly, I had to swallow my pride and apologize to Max and Taylor. Harry came with me for moral support. We all sat down and I apologized for being a childish brat. You're a good man, Max, and my mom truly loves you. I would be grateful if you and Taylor would be a part of this family. Can you two please come back? I said. He looked shocked for a moment, but then he smiled at me and said, With pleasure. I miss your mom so much, it's driving me crazy. Yep, he's been so miserable without her, Taylor added. I'm sorry to you too, Taylor. Do you need some help with packing? I asked her. Taylor smiled at me and replied, Sure, that'd be great. So, mom and Max had a small ceremony in the end, although I still ended up wearing a dress, but hey. It was an exception for Mum's special day. It was a beautiful ceremony, and Mum looked amazing. Next, I had to make Taylor and Garrett get back together. I went to see Garrett at school and told him that it was all my fault Taylor broke up with him. He looked quite shocked, but at the same time, he was also happy to hear me say that. Well, that was such a relief. I felt much better now, knowing that I cleared up all misunderstandings between them. Then, when I was having lunch with Taylor in the cafeteria, he walked over with this enormous bouquet of roses, passed them to her, and asked her to be his girlfriend again. Taylor looked so surprised, but then she gave me a worried look. I smiled and said, It's okay. You two are meant for each other. She was so happy she hugged me. I guess it was good to see her happy. And last but not least, I had to finish off the beach conversation with Harry. Obviously, I couldn't let that slide that easily. I've been thinking about it a lot, wondering what could it possibly be. Was it... Does he... Jeez, why does it feel like my whole body is heating up every time I think back to that moment? I asked him to come to the beach, where I prepared a blanket on the sand with two cans of Coke and a huge pizza. His face lit up when he saw the setup. We had an awesome time and didn't stop laughing, even when Harry teased me by reminding me how I'd worn a dress to impress Garrett. I looked Harry in the eyes and said, Thanks. Thanks for always having my back when I needed. And, um, meeting you is also the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You're the only one who accepts me for who I am. He touched my hand and said, Kat, last time, I wanted to tell you something. I, I really like you and I want us to be more than friends. Will you be my girlfriend? 
Oh my god, this was crazy. Suddenly, I felt so shy, so I gently punched his arm and turned away, looking elsewhere so he couldn't see I was blushing like a tomato. Then I said, Okay, fine, but it's just because I pity you. He laughed and hugged me. It felt so good being in his arms. Life was pretty great. Finally. But there was just one last issue to resolve. My dad. I went round to his place and we had a super long talk. He admitted he messed up and apologized for what he'd done in the past and for trying to get me to split mom and Max up. He told me that it didn't matter if I was a boy or not. He will always love me and is very proud of me. So... As you can see, it's been a whirlwind, but it all worked out in the end. I have the best boyfriend ever and an amazing family. I've been through a lot, but all I'm going to say is never change who you are just to fit into the norm or to please anyone. Be yourself and the right people will love the real you. If they can't accept you for who you are, then they're just not worth it. So everyone loves Christmas, right? Trust me, it's not so great when your boss fires you in November. How was I supposed to buy presents now? Still, I tried to see the positives. I hated that boring, underpaid, overworked job anyway. My ex-boss Adrian was the worst. He's a crazy perfectionist who always gave me ridiculous deadlines, complained about every tiniest mistake, and flipped out if things didn't go his way. No wonder he was still single at 32. Who could ever stand him? I wouldn't miss him, or my tragic ass-kissing co-workers. Anyways, on the bright side, I'd get to spend the entire holiday season with my family and my boyfriend Mac in peace, without being bothered by any annoying work emails. I, in fact, have invited Matt over for Thanksgiving dinner with my parents and plan to spend this cozy weekend with my loved ones. Then, the day before Thanksgiving, I packed up my car and was about to go and pick Matt up when my phone beeped. Sonia, I don't think Thanksgiving is a good idea. I just think we need some time apart. Hope you have a great time. See you around. X. What? Had he just broken up with me over text message? I immediately rang him up, but he turned his phone off. Just great. Here I was, stuck at home for the entire Thanksgiving and Christmas period, being a jobless, boyfriendless loser. To make it worse, even my little sister Gina had a boyfriend who adored her. This is so unfair. One night, my parents were out to buy a Christmas tree, and Gina had her boyfriend over to help put up Christmas lights and decorations. Well, needless to say, love was in the air, and that festive vibe didn't help at all with my misery. So, I refused to join them and curled up in my room. Feeling so lonely and miserable, I downloaded Tinder. I usually wasn't one for dating apps, but I was feeling so low, I would have happily spoken to anyone. I didn't feel like being me. I was sick of being me, so I used the fake name Crystal and just put some artsy scenery pictures up. I could be whoever I wanted to be. And you know what? It seemed to be working, as a few guys wanted to talk to me. Okay, most of them were also bored, or only after one thing, but then there's this guy called Carl that caught my attention. Like me, he had no pictures of himself, but instead, he had images of song lyrics and movie quotes, including the quote, The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. I love the movie Lost in Translation, so I sent him a message telling him he had good taste in films, and he messaged me back complimenting the scenery photos I took. After that, we started chatting days and nights. We talked about everything, from the dumb to the meaningful. He actually helped me out a lot and made the Christmas period bearable for me. It was all going great, until Christmas Eve. He sent me a message to wish me a Merry Christmas, along with, let's meet up for a drink. Oh no. Even though the app said he was only a few miles away, I wasn't ready for meetups. I actually was nervous upon reading his text. My heart was pounding, and I found myself worrying about what he would think of me when we met. What if he didn't look like what I imagined? What if he'd be disappointed when he saw me? Why does that even matter, though? Unless... I developed feelings for him. I don't even know anymore. But it's certain that I couldn't face him just yet. I politely refused his invitation. He was cool about it. Then we still continued to talk like normal. 
I survived Christmas, and then for New Year's Eve, Gina persuaded me to go to a party with her boyfriend and friends. I wasn't really keen to join, but I guessed I needed to do something to stop this gloominess. As I was walking in, I was so busy brushing off the snow on my shoulder that I bumped into a guy. To my horror, I looked up and saw that it was my old boss, Adrian. Why was he here, in my hometown? He was also shocked, but managed to smile at me. But I just gave him a glare, rolled my eyes, flipped back my hair, then strode off. What a mood killer! I grabbed a drink and sat in the corner in an attempt to avoid bumping into Adrian again. Gina found me and tried dragging me onto the dance floor, but I refused. Then she winked at me and in a tipsy voice said, You need a man to dance with. I'll be right back. Five minutes later, she excitedly waved at me and shouted over, Found one! I just want to facepalm as I saw her dragging Adrian by the hand over to me. Talk about awkward. But still, I mumbled out a hi, downed a shot for courage, and then chatted to him. Okay, it turns out he was visiting his grandparents who lived around here, and he was actually an okay guy to talk to. After I spent most of the night talking to him, he bought a drink, then said to me, I have to admit that after the death stare you gave me on entry, I was afraid for my life. But it turns out, I've enjoyed chatting with you. Sorry, I blushed. No, it's okay. I'd be mad with me too if I were you. Letting you go from work was nothing personal. I had to let one person go, and I only chose you because I knew you were wasted there. Um, thanks, I guess, I laughed. Let's get another shot. Okay, so maybe Adrian wasn't that bad of a person after all. And I don't know if it's because of all the drinks we downed, the atmosphere, or the fact that everyone else around us was sharing New Year's kisses, that I almost felt like Adrian looked like he wanted to kiss me on the strike of midnight too. And I too didn't dodge it. Luckily, nothing happened. I mean, that would have been weird, right? The next day, Adrian messaged me, saying he would help me set up a job interview at a big media company. Wow, that's amazing! Now I had no excuse to sulk around anymore. I needed to get back to the city and sort my life out. Only, I still couldn't get Carl out of my head. I guessed these feelings were real. To clear up my mind, I decided to confess to him online. But then he messaged me back saying, I think you're great and I love talking to you, but I have a crush on my coworker. I'm sorry, but I'd like to stay friends. Ouch! Rejection hurt! Back in the city, I felt lonelier than ever. Yes, I'd got the new job and it was going well, but I was sick of seeing loved up couples everywhere. To make it worse, Gina came to stay with me for a while and she's always on the phone, giggling and FaceTiming her boyfriend. Now I couldn't even escape lovebirds in my own apartment. Feeling down, I messaged Carl again, just casually asked him to meet up later this weekend when I would be back home again for my mom's birthday. Well, to be honest, I just couldn't give him up just yet. Maybe he would change his mind when we met, or I would be able to get over him once we meet. But he made up some excuse to reject me again. That was it, I told myself. It's official over now. Depressed, I called Adrian up for a drink. He arrived looking kinda cute, but the sting of rejection was still on my mind. I confided to Adrian, and I asked him if he thought Carl was a fool for turning me down. Adrian slammed his drink onto the table and turned to me and said, You're the fool. Why are you stupidly chasing after some guy online? He might not even be real. He might be some 60-year-old pervert. Why won't you just open your eyes and look in front of you? Then he stood up, locked me in his arms, and tried to kiss me. What? I was so mad I pulled myself away from him and slapped him straight across the face before I stomped off. He was meant to be my friend, not some guy after just one thing. I was so hurt, I cried while texting Carl about what just happened, but he didn't reply. The next day, I woke up with a pounding head and puffy eyes. I checked my phone. Adrian had called me, but nothing from Carl. He must have been too busy with his coworker, huh? Suddenly, I heard the door knock. My sister answered it and told me it was Adrian. I reluctantly went out to see him. I mean, I guess I needed to at least hear him out. He was standing there looking sheepish as he said, I'm so sorry about last night, Sonia. I was slightly drunk and I guess I've read the signals wrong. For what it's worth, I think that Carl guy is a fool for letting you go. You're amazing. I wasn't in the mood to talk to him, so said it was fine, then told him to leave. I closed the door and threw myself on the sofa. Then about ten minutes later, there was someone at the door again. 
I answered it, and there was Adrian, but this time he changed his outfit. Confused, I grumbled, what else do you want? Then he politely greeted me. Hello, Crystal. Let me introduce myself. I'm Carl. We've been talking for months. I guess, if you think about it, the more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. I stared at him open-mouthed. He just quoted Lost in Translation, and he'd called me Crystal. Then reality struck me. OMG! All this time, and Adrian was Carl? I dragged him inside. We sat down on the sofa and talked everything out. It's so unreal! Turns out the guy I've been chasing after is literally right in front of me. How ironic! I was so happy I hugged him and broke down crying, apologizing. Right then, my sister walked out from the kitchen, took one look at us, and laughed out, Well, 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 isn't this the awful boss who fired you? But most importantly, isn't he the guy I brought to you at the New Year's Eve party? You two owe me big time. We all burst out laughing. So, yeah, after a horrid holiday season, now I finally could start a promising new year with a great job and a pretty awesome new boyfriend. I guess things always have a way of working out in the end, right? Thank you for listening to my story, and wish you guys a good start into the new year! I sprinted to the cafeteria, hoping that there'd be something tasty left. This was my teacher's fault. She made me stay behind after class. Mindy, your grades are too low. Yada yada. Oh no, all I saw were empty trays everywhere. My stomach rumbled at the thought of having to return to class hungry. But then, like a mirage in the desert, the last loaf of bread, chillin' next to Tom the hottie. Without a second thought, I grabbed it and bit into it. Mmm, chewy. Very chewy. Then suddenly, everyone burst out laughing. That's when it hit me. There was no bread. I was munching on Tom's ballet shoes. Hey, I'm Mindy, and I belong to a family of champion weightlifters. Yep, my dad's genes explain why I'm the tallest girl in school. I used to long to become a weightlifter just like dad, but then I met my BFF, Tiffany. Suddenly, I discovered a world of pretty dresses and delicate spins called figure skating, and I couldn't look at my ugly weightlifting shorts in the same way again. Tiff took me ice skating at the mall, and I loved it. Since then, that's all I've wanted to be. Okay, so I may not be petite like Tiff, but I was smart enough to use algorithms to calculate angles during training. Tiff and I both got scholarships into this amazing sports-focused high school, and yeah, that's when the trouble started. It didn't matter what cute outfits I wore or how normal I tried to be. Being a giraffe made me stand out, and being with pretty, petite Tiff made it worse. The only ones who didn't ignore me were the weightlifting team, but that's only because my dad was their coach. Then, to make things even worse, my clumsiness and appetite of an elephant accidentally got me on Tom's bad side. This was bad, as almost every girl and guy in this place was obsessed with him. Ever since then, no one took me seriously, and trying to avoid my dad so he didn't lecture me on giving up skating for weightlifting was tiring. I was in the changing rooms when Tiff came over. Oh, I forgot it was the annual health check day today. I shouldn't have eaten that muffin earlier. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot about that, too. No way could I have my weight published for the entire school to see. I'd be nicknamed Mindy the Massive. So when no one was looking, I sneaked out of there. But trying to find a hiding spot big enough for this oversized body isn't easy. Ah, the janitor's closet. But as I hurried toward it, I bumped into Tom. Have you ever heard of ladies first? You call yourself a lady? Fine, lady. Let me have this. In exchange, I have this very yummy snack for you. What snack? This bread? Ha <laughs> ha! How dare you! At that moment, the door suddenly swung open and the janitor yelled at us to stop kissing? Ugh! What? Thanks to this unnecessary misunderstanding, we ended up in the principal's office along with our parents. My dad even brought the entire weightlifting team along and started throwing a tantrum. Mindy, you skipped classes! I couldn't mention the health checkup, so in a panic, I babbled out, I was on a date with Tom. Who would ever date you, Miss Brahma Bull? Then there was a loud bang as my dad smashed the table in half. Bull? Who are you calling a bull? I, I mean, Mindy is strong and cute, just like a bull. Uh, our love language is a bit, uh, special, isn't it, honey? Oh, my lovey donkey, you're revealing a little too much. 
everyone gasped in shock. And the next thing I knew, Dad burst into tears of joy and started hugging everyone. My pumpkin finally has a boyfriend. This calls for a party at my house. But if you ever break my little girl's heart, you're doomed. I thought it was just a white lie, until the next day the stampede of students bombarded me with questions. How long have you and Tom been together? Who made the first move? You or him? You have to come sit with us. So this white lie had actually grown legs and was sprinting. But strangely, this feels interesting. Suddenly, I wasn't just Tiffany's oddball sidekick anymore. Instead, I had all the limelight, and this shouldn't be ending so soon. No, I had to extend my fake dating with Tom. So right when Tom walked by, I immediately dragged him away amid the roars of approval from the students. The entire weightlifting team is spying on us. Do you want to feel my dad's wrath if he finds out you were lying to him? You started this. I don't think my dad will see it that way. Fine, I'll play your boyfriend, and you stop eating my shoes. Deal. So we continued the dating facade, but I didn't expect that the weightlifting team actually was spying on us everywhere. We had to keep up the act. Tom escorted me to all of my classes, stuck adorable notes on my locker, and during lunch, he fed me spaghetti and used his sleeve to wipe the sauce off my mouth. We ended up spending most of our time together, and the spies definitely thought we were the real deal. I knew this was all just an act, but he was like a big cheese ball. My cheese ball, so still, it felt good. The more time I spent with Tom, the more I found myself liking him. He listened as I told him how hard I worked to get into the school, and in return, I learned new aspects about him, such as how much he loved ballet dancing, even though his family and his former friends hadn't always been understanding about it, and that his cold exterior was due to this, as he didn't want anyone who would question his dreams in his life again. We started growing closer, and he did some super cute things, such as cheering me on during skating practice and bringing me hot chocolate to warm me up. I was enjoying getting to know Tom, but unfortunately, not everyone was a part of our fan club. No matter what I said, Tiff wouldn't believe that he was anything other than a bad boy. She would send me endless texts just to force me to choose between Tom and her. I knew ever since Tom appeared, I spent less time with her, but she was being too much. To top it off, she even lied about being injured during practice to ruin my date. I gave Tiff the cold shoulder after that. She needed to reflect on her actions. One day, I was sorting out my locker when Rachel, one of the most popular girls in our team, aka Tiff's rival, approached me and asked me to join her group. But what about Tiff? Tiff always told me that Rachel's no good and... What's wrong? Do you have to ask for Tiffany's permission before befriending someone? Or what? Aren't you more famous than she is? Right! I need to stop being seen as her sidekick. I have my own choice. My own friends. So I agreed to join Rachel's group. And I gotta admit, it's pretty sweet being with a popular clique. And on the other hand, dating the cutest boy. Spending all this time with Tom made me realize something. I had feelings for him. Real feelings. Pretty soon I found I couldn't help but babble about Tom all the time to Rachel. Oh honey, you're so cute. But I don't think you should keep seeing that guy. Huh? Why? Okay, I see. Now you're acting like Tiff too. No, I mean, there's a rumor that he's dating someone behind your back. Tiff. I saw them looking cozy together. What? No way! But Tiff did seem jealous, and she did ruin my date with Tom, so maybe there was some truth to this. Rachel's words were bugging me, so after school, I went to Tiff's house to ask her about it. That's when I saw Tiff crying in Tom's arms. Rachel was right. Tiff and Tom were war together. I left before either of them saw me. Sobbing, I texted Tom ending our fake relationship and blocked both numbers. The next day at school, everyone was gossiping about how Tom had left me for Tiff. And worst of all, being the giant I was, I couldn't hide away from it. Even Rachel and her group turned on me. What's wrong? Have you fallen off your high horse? Once an ugly duckling, always an ugly duckling. I couldn't bear staying there and watching them laughing at me, so I left school and went back home. I wasn't going back there, and no one could make me. I locked myself in my room and refused to leave it, until... Is this because of that Tom? Pumpkin, I'll teach him a lesson. I reluctantly opened the door. Mindy, you look terrible. What's happened? It all became too much, and I ended up blurting everything out to Dad. I'm a joke. No one takes me seriously because of how I look. No boys like me. No one wants to be my friend. And no one believes I can skate. Pumpkin, you got into one of the top sports schools out there. That means you're a talented skater, regardless of what anyone else says, including me. Fame is just temporary. Look at me, once a world champion, but now just a beer-bellied man whose sole life purpose is to raise my pumpkin. Dad. <laughs> All right. You're too strong to let these dummies knock you down. Got it?
Dad was right. I couldn't give up on my dreams because of other people's opinions. So, the next day I returned to school and ignored all the gobs and jibes. On seeing Tom and Tiff together, I stared over them and carried on walking. This was the first step in cutting toxic people out of my life and learning to love myself. Which is why, when the teacher asked for volunteers for the skating competition, as Tiff put up her hand, so did I. We all know you only did that so you can face off Tiff. They could think what they wanted. I wasn't backing down. Then my phone beat. It was a message from Rachel asking me to meet her outside. As soon as I reached her, she started asking me all these questions, as if she cared. Suddenly worried for me? Where's your sarcastic smirk? I'm sorry for the other day. Everyone was staring at me, so I had to play along with them. Trust me, I would never look down on you. Okay, I didn't expect this. Anyway, this is Alex. I don't want you to be the only one without a skating partner, so I found him for you. Forgive me? She seemed so genuine that I couldn't not believe her. I was once in her place, scared of the judgment and peer pressure, so I knew how it felt. Maybe Rachel did mean well. Besides, I'd already lost Tiff as a friend. I didn't want to be alone. I arrived home to find Tiff already waiting for me. Why are you being besties with Rachel? She ridiculed you in front of everyone. You've changed, Mindy. Do you want me to be the same and be picked on forever? And you're not a great friend either. You just want me to live in your shadow and witness how happy you are with your new boyfriend. What about you? You left me too. I felt stunned. How could she be that upset when she was the one who now had Tom? When I'd calmed down, I thought back to what Tiff had said and wondered if I really had changed. Tiff was always there for me, regardless of what I looked like, but I didn't tell her Tom and I weren't for real, as I guess it made me feel superior. I joined Rach's group without considering how bad it would make Tiff feel. I realized that I had an inferiority complex toward my own best friend. On the day of the competition, I went to talk to Tiff, but I couldn't find her. I smashed my routine with Alex, but during Tiff's turn, I noticed that something seemed wrong. Then during her spin, I saw her lose her balance and... Thud! She fell hard and was rushed to the hospital. I rushed over to accompany her there, but Rachel stopped me. Why did you do that with her skates? Was that the reason why you told me to keep it a secret about you sneaking into Tiffany's waiting room? I tried to explain that I didn't do anything, but then the judge announced the results. Because of Tiff's mishap, I'd scored enough to land the last spot in the final round. I won't work with someone who uses tricks to win. Giant girl, you're on your own. Everyone started to groan at me, and I began to panic. Why does no one want to believe me? The final round was around the corner, but I couldn't stop worrying. As I stepped onto the ice, I spotted Alex smirking while standing next to Rachel and realized they'd played me. I stood there as still as a statue and too frightened to skate alone. Then the crowd fell silent and I saw someone wobbly approaching me. Tom! The rumors about me and Tiff aren't true. Mindy, I like you. So, how about a bull girl? Will you let this ballet boy be your partner? Confused yet touched, I nodded. Now chin up, look. And in the stand was Tiff, holding up a banner while screaming, Mindy, you can do it! Energized by newfound courage, Tom and I fumbled through our routine. And even though we made loads of mistakes, it didn't matter, as I felt so happy to know that I had Tom and Tiff on my side and that I hadn't given up. I came last and Rachel won, but as she's receiving the trophy, the judges had some discussion. Turns out, another student had video evidence of Rachel damaging Tiff's skates. As they took the trophy off her, she got angry and shouted, Obviously, I wouldn't want to be friends with a freak like you. I was just using you so I could eliminate Tiff. Her words would have once stung me, but now I didn't care what she had to say, and I hurried off to find Tiff. On seeing her, I gave her a big hug, and she told me the truth. Sorry I couldn't tell you sooner. Actually, Tom is my half-brother. My dad's a famous skater. He lied that he was single, but he wasn't. He was married. He refused to be a part of my life, and mom was too afraid to go public about what he did. She struggled with no financial help from him. I resented my dad and presumed Tom would be just like him. I never told you this as I was embarrassed, but turns out you're right. Tom is actually a great guy. Oh, wow. Now everything made sense. All these secrets had led to all this confusion, so we promised never to keep anything from each other again. Thanks to the friends that really care for me, I've learned to love myself, and I use my size as a strength. Being unique isn't a weakness, it's an advantage, and best of all, the people that matter like me just as I am. I and Pearl were playing our favorite, playing Disney princess. You have 
to be the princess this time, Ruby. We're gonna make a perfect Elsa and Anna. No, I'm going to be your knight, fighting all the bad guys and protecting you, milady. Then a maid knocked on the door with a phone in her hands. That might be my parents. Ruby, the school called again. How on earth could you get all these words spelled wrongly? What kind of nurse is spelled with a Z? I am really trying. It's all right, Bay. Studying isn't for everyone, and she might be of a sport type. Sweet Pea, could you just try a little more next time? Good girl. We have to go now. Bye. I know you can do this. You just need to keep practicing. You're perfect, just the way you are. Hi everyone, I'm Ruby, and this is my little sister, Pearl. Since my parents were always away for business trips, it's always just been me and her, growing up together. You already know I was terrible at studying, but Pearl was nothing like me. She was a genius. What are you doing, Pearl? For God's sake, it's 6 a.m. The sun is still sleeping, and you should be sleeping too. Absolutely not. Today is my first day in high school, and I have to make a good impression. My streak must continue. Straight A since 2015, I know, I know. As if your valedictorian title isn't impressive enough. I might be Ruby, the dumb kid who couldn't read half of a word, but it doesn't matter, because now I am Ruby, the awesome soccer captain. Yes! Go, Ruby! That's my sister, everyone! I led the school soccer team to win multiple trophies, and I also aimed at the varsity scholarship myself. Studying was still a nightmare, but I gradually accepted that I wasn't born for studying, but for soccer. So, all was well. So, that morning, I was walking with Pearl on her first day at school, when Beth and her clique approached us. Hey, Ruby, ready to flunk your junior year? Aw, oh, Beth, still salty because Coach left you on the bench yesterday? My advice for you would be to learn how to actually play soccer. Unfortunately, some of us have other things going on to focus on, like our brains. Oh, oops, you don't have one. You can't understand. Sorry. <laughs> Boo-hoo, funny. That's Beth on my soccer team who always messed with me like everyone else. But all's good now, as I had my dear sister studying in the same school as me. Uh, sis, I found my class. I have to go now. Bye. The next day at school, we had a new English teacher. Ruby Walker, could you read the summary on page 10? Oh, screwed. Oh, dear. Is that your thinking face? Didn't know you were capable of that. Sorry, teacher, but she can't read. <laughs> you know what? My thoughts today on the book can be summarized into the classic song by the amazing Taylor Swift. So the haters gonna hate, 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 but I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Just then, the entire class was in a frenzy, and everyone was singing, dancing, like they were in the Eras tour. The teacher was so upset and tried to calm everyone down, but I was sent to the principal's office immediately. First trouble in the junior, huh, Ruby? Listen, both you and I know how much you mean to the team, but unfortunately, it is not enough anymore. New district laws state that students must average at least C-minus to be eligible for the varsity scholarship. What? But I'm the most qualified for it! I am sorry, but until you can move grades from whatever it is right now to a C-minus, you're off the team to focus more on your studying. Beth is now our candidate for the scholarship, and she'll take over your place. Beth? That girl who scored just five goals all season when I had scored 20? The world was really getting crazy. No way was I going to watch my passion get taken away from me that easily. I'm going to study hard. Right. I'm going to ask Pearl to tutor me. Ah, speak of the devil. Hi, Pearl. You know her. I heard she's kicked out of the soccer team because she's too dumb. Oh, no. Uh, no. How scandalous if our valedictorian did. <laughs> well, maybe now wasn't a good time. That night, I dozed off at my desk writing four words over and over again. I am not dumb. The news had spread that I got kicked off the team because of my grades, and the kids at school were vicious with their insults. Like I didn't have enough issues already, Pearl started to avoid me like a plague, as if she's ashamed of me. So I couldn't ask her to tutor me either. It's like the whole world was going against me. The district superintendent was visiting our school, and the principal chose the two smartest kids to give a welcome speech, Pearl and a new student, Joe, from my class. So he started to hang out a lot at our home to prepare for the speech. Hey, Ruby, need any help with tomorrow's test? 
Nah, I am famously unteachable. Don't waste your time on me, and Pearl is waiting for you. It's all right, she can wait. Let me help. Surprisingly, for the first time in my life, I felt like I could actually learn. There was something about the way he taught me that made me absorb knowledge naturally. Like, he understood me and my struggles. Hey, there you are. I've been looking for you. We have a test coming, so I was helping Ruby. And we have a huge speech to give on Thursday. You know nobody actually listens to those speeches, right? Anyway, I trust you to come up with something incredible. Pearl stormed out angrily, but the only thing in my mind then was that I actually could learn. Hey, Joe, please teach me more. Joe could help me learn to get better grades, and then I could finally get back to my team and win the scholarship. Later that night, when I was practicing some test questions Joe gave me, Pearl barged into my room. I am not comfortable with you spending time with my boyfriend alone. Boyfriend? I didn't know you were dating. Well, not yet. Not with you hogging him and not giving me space to charm him. Oh, sorry. I was just excited. Joe is an incredible teacher. I was actually learning. Yeah, right. Of course you're capable of that. Pearl left my room, and it felt like a knife went through my heart. Since when did she think of me like that? Like everyone else does. But she always believed in me. The next day was the speech, and even though I was heartbroken, I still went to support her, and I clapped the loudest after she gave her amazing speech. Thank you for granting us a chance to study here. On behalf of the whole school students, I'll try my best to bring glory to our school's tradition. Wonderful speech, but I think before you bring glory to our school, shouldn't you teach your beloved sister, Ruby Walker, how to read first? I mean, maybe your dummy sister could learn one or two words from you before getting kicked out of her school. <laughs> The whole auditorium burst out laughing, and my rage was filling my body. I lunged at Beth and grabbed her stupid ponytail until she screamed so loud, even the moon could hear her. Teachers and guards tried to separate us, while other students were excitedly shouting and cheering. In the middle of the messy crowd, I saw Pearl look at me in shame. I ran to her, but she just brushed me off. It's you again. Joe isn't enough, and now you try to steal my spotlight as well. What? No, no, I never meant harm to you, I swear. But she didn't listen to me and angrily stormed off. I was so angry at my brain for always failing me and at everyone. Now my dream was gone and my dear sister hated me as well. I fell down on the bleachers and saw Beth wearing my captain's armband, gathering everyone to the morning practice. She waved at me with the widest smile. It was hard to fight the tears, so I let them fall. There you are. I was looking for you to continue our classes. I don't think we should continue our classes. Why? Pearl, she doesn't like you and I together, and she will hate me for this. Oh, uh, I will talk to her, but this is more important. You need to get back on the pitch. But you're just wasting your time on me. I'm just an idiot who ruined others' lives. No, you're not an idiot at all. You're dyslexic, like me. I've noticed your symptoms for a while, but I wasn't so sure. But I am now. Dyslexia? There's a name for this? So I'm not... I'm not stupid? No, you just learn differently. I will help you and teach you all the things the specialists taught me. My mind was fuzzy. I gave Joe a hug without thinking. I felt relief spread all over my body. I wasn't dumb. I was dyslexic. At home that night, I searched everything about dyslexia and even took an online assessment when suddenly Pearl barged in. You told Joe I like him? Um, yes and no, but not like that. Well, thank you so much. He just called to tell me he just considered me a little sister. And you know what? I saw you hugging him on the bleachers this afternoon. So you were going behind my back all this time? What a sister! Don't ever speak to me again! Pearl stormed out and kept her words of never speaking to me. It broke my heart to see us parting like this. Luckily, Joe comforted me and helped me stay focused on studying. Now that I knew what my problem really was and how to fix it, I improved every day. The letters didn't make me dizzy like before anymore, and our effort finally bore fruit, as I got my first B- ever on a test. And in no time, I got called to the principal's office. It has been incredible watching you turn your grades around. Good job, Ruby. I always knew. You're a gem like your name, and you just need some sharpening. Welcome back to the team. <laughs> Thank you! I ran out of his office and rushed to find Joe immediately. 
We did it! I'm back on the team! Congratulations, but that was all you. You did it, Ruby. That moment would have been perfect if I could celebrate with Pearl. I knew she didn't want to talk to me, but I really wanted to share this with her. But upon seeing me and Joe, she was just shooting me death rays. The joy in my mouth instantly turned to ash. I just wished we could go back to the old good days together. But I had no idea how. <sighs> With me coming back to the team, I reclaimed the captain title and was eligible for the varsity scholarship. And of course, my impressive record easily got me the win. Congratulations to Ruby Walker for winning this year's varsity scholarship. Come on stage. Thank you very much, sir. All I can say is I'm immensely grateful for this chance, and I'm going to try my best. Hi, everyone. Ruby's too shy, so she did prepare a speech here. Good luck. Except that I didn't prepare this note. Everyone in the audience all locked eyes on me, and I was sweating all over when I took the paper from her. Today is trim, trim, um... Oh, our scholarship winner just had a little problem. She just couldn't read. I hope it won't affect the scholarship much, will it? I ran out of the hall before the tears blurred my eyesight. Joe was racing after me, but Pearl caught me first. Pearl, I don't really have time for your mocking now. No, no, I'm sorry. Joe told me about your dyslexia, and you should, you know? Yeah, but it can wait. But you need to go back there right now. You've tried so hard to earn this place. I wouldn't let my sister waste it just because of Beth's dirty move. Joe also nodded encouragingly at me. Pearl was right. It's my passion. It's me or no one who would claim it. So I walked back into the hall, and as soon as I appeared, everyone started to laugh. I stepped up to the mic, took a deep breath, and read the speech. There were still some stumbles and stuttering, but I went through to the last word. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby. You all can see I have some troubles reading because I have dyslexia. <gasps> all my life, I have struggled and accepted that I was stupid. Until now, I know I'm not. I still haven't figured out how to read big words, but I am not ashamed of my struggles anymore. And no one should bear the troubles I've had. Dyslexic people like me need others to help us, to acknowledge our difficulties, and to be given a chance like any others. We're not dumb. We just need a different way to learn. Thank you. The hall was completely silent for a while before standing up for an ovation. I walked away from the podium to see the scowling look on Beth's face. I went backstage, where Pearl gave me a warm hug. I'm so proud of you. And I'm sorry, I should have helped you. But instead, I've been horrible or even cruel to you. Yeah, yeah, you've been forgiven. So now could you please just stay quiet? I just want to hold my little sister longer. I miss this hug. I miss Pearl. My Pearl. It's good to have my sister back. And just like that, my life was back to normal. Uh, of course, with some changes. There is something I need to tell you, Ruby. I'm sorry for the Joe thing. I let jealousy take over me and said bad things to you. But I realized he and I would never become a thing. But you would. Huh? No, we're just friends. Are you? Now come with me. Then she dragged me to the living room, where Joe and another boy were standing. Then she placed my hand in Joe's. Joe, could you please take care of my sister when I go out with my boyfriend? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, sure. 